Like I mentioned previously, we're going to need to use Postman to test our API because if we use the browser, we won't be able to send post requests and put requests or delete requests because the browser can only send get requests and through a form, the browser can send post requests, but we won't be able to do that. So I'm going to be using this HTTP client called Postman and you just have to go to postman.com and you will link to the Postman website where you can go ahead and download it on your computer by just clicking on this download at the top right corner. So Postman is an HTTP client. You can use it to send any type of request. And by any type, I mean with any one of the HTTP verbs. So you can send post requests, get requests, delete requests, put requests, or patch requests. And we're going to be using it to test the API. There is another one called Insomnia. So if you go to insomnia.rest, it'll take you to this page. And this one is also very popular. I've used it before myself uh, and they do the same thing. So it's really whatever you prefer, but either one of them will work fine. So I'm going to be using Postman and I already have Postman installed on my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and open Postman so that we can use it. I have Postman open and this is a brand new window of Postman. So I haven't made any requests or anything like that. It's clean. And all I have to do is to click on this plus sign right here and then open a new tab. And then in that tab, I can pass in the URL to the API that I want to call. And then I can select what type of request that I want to make. As you can see here, we have a list of pretty much all possible requests that we can make on the internet. So I need to pass in the URL. So that's going to be HTTP colon double four slash localhost. And remember our application is running on port 8080. Well, it's not running yet, but when it runs, it runs on port 8080. We have to go to the base URL, which is employee. And let's say we want to go to the first endpoint here. So if we open the app back up, you can see there is a get mapping here that goes from employee to all. And this was going to return an array or a list of all the users that we have in the application. So then that means that once we pass in the employee, we have to pass slash all. And this request is supposed to be a get request. It's going to go into the application and hit this endpoint right here. And this is going to run and then return the response to us. So let's go ahead and run the application and then we can send that request and see what happens. So I'm going to go to the top right corner and then click on this green arrow. And the application is starting. And the application started. So if I scroll to the right a little bit here in the console, let me expand that a little bit. You can see that the app is running on port 8080. And this is the port number that we pass in our URL. So let's go back to Postman. As you can see, we're going to send that get request to slash employee slash all. And let's see what happens. So send. And here we got nothing back. We just have an empty array. And the reason for this is because we don't have any employees in the application yet. And we got a 200 status code response back. So that means that everything went well. It just didn't find any users on the back end, which is the database. So what we have to do now is to just add some new users and then see what we get back when we send that request again. So I'm going to open a new tab and let's just copy the base URL here. So I'm going to copy all of this and then paste it here. Now you have to remember this is going to be a post request because we're trying to add a new piece of information on the server. And we can also double check the URL here. So if you scroll down a little bit here, you can see this is expecting a post request to the slash add and it's expecting an employee information. So here we're going to do add to send that employee in the request body. We have to click on body here and then go to raw. And we're going to send JSON data. So in the text drop down, just click it and then select JSON. Once this request is sent, it's going to send whatever is on the body as a JSON type of object or JSON data. So I have prepared some data. So I have this text.txt. I have a bunch of employees that I'm going to send to the uh, server to be sent to the database. So if you remember, if we go back a little bit to the employee class, you can see that we're supposed to send all of this information right here. So the name, the email, the job title, the font, and the URL for the image. But we're not going to provide the employee code because this is going to provide for us on the fly. And the ID is going to be generated by JPA. So we don't need to pass in the ID and we don't need to pass in the employee code. So we're just going to pass the name, the email, the job title, font, and an image URL. And this is exactly what I have in my data. So I have email, image URL, job title, name, and then phone number.
So I'm going to copy the first employee and then go back to Postman. And in that body, now I'm going to paste this information here. So I'm going to scroll this up so we can see the response when the response comes back. So again, we're sending a post request and it's going to go to the slash add so that we can add a new employee. And by default, this is accepting JSON data. So we select body so that we can put some JSON information or JSON data inside of the body of the request. And then we put the information that we need to put in in JSON format. And I'm going to go ahead and send this request now and let's see what happens. Let me see if I can scroll. So here you can see that now we have an ID for that user and we have an employee code, which is just a UUID. So you can see that this user was entered in a database because we have this 201 here, which is created because we created this new piece of information on the back end and everything went well. So now if we go back to the first tab where we can send the get request to get all of the employees, Let's see if we're going to get that employee back because we should. So let's send that request. And there you go. You see we have an array and in that array we have one element and this is the user that we just added. And we can verify this information in our database as well. So let me open the MySQL comment line. Let's do my SQL and I want the comment line client. And here I can put in my password. So let me in and I can do show databases. And I can say use employee manager. Oops. And now we're using the employee manager database. And then here I can do show tables. You can see we have the employee table in here. And then I can say select star or everything from employee, which is the table name. And you can see here we have this new employee in the database. You can see here. This is the command line client that comes by default with um, MySQL. So we don't necessarily have to use this. I just like to use it because I like to use the command line, but you can use Workbench as well. And I have Workbench installed. So um, I'll be showing you this data inside of Workbench. So we can see that data was added. We can see the employee code, the image, and everything else that we're supposed to see. So this is all working. In the next video, we're going to continue by testing all the other endpoints. So I'll see you guys in the next one.